All right. So one thing that we've talked about uh, regularly on the show is what is transportation going to look like after? What's the new post-COVID going to be? And uh, Georgia has been looking at airlines. And I can pretty much tell you, good Lord, (laughs) what are we going to do? Now, one of the cool things that I found, and you're going to read that in the in the Forbes article, is some of the new proposed methods of making it safer. Um, but I will also say that after collecting these three articles about sanitization of the airport and new methods of flying, the other thing I saw a few days later was some CEOs saying that basically we shouldn't have to force people to wear masks in a plane. Now, we just got done talking about <laughs> church in an enclosed environment, and y'all know how big a church can be. Much bigger than an airplane. <laughs> talking about a tuna can, a flying tuna can, where we think we're going to get in there and not have to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we now asteroid. Uh, so let's I mean, go. look at the cruise ships, right? They're huge and they're and like they're, incubators for disease. And they record, are opening up. Yeah. Like nobody, they, nobody remembers the Corona cruise that was trapped in, I think, Southern California <laughs> because nobody could disembark because they were infected with coronavirus. Yeah. Okay. So let's get on to, let's get on to the proposed uh, recommendations by simply flying. All right. Touchless cabins and check-in terminals. Now I can get down with that, but basically, you know, you grab your phone, you check in. Now I've been using um, my phone for e-passage for flying for the past couple of years since uh, I took a job that required me to travel more for conventions. I love it. I'm down with not touching anything because Lord knows I don't want to touch anything that anybody else is touching because I've seen humans. Now, but can we really get people to use technology this way? I'm not sure. For me, when I was flying, and that was when everybody else was flying, more people actually had to go on ahead, go to the ticket counter, check their bags, everything else, and they were constantly confused, and they had it on their on their phone and still were trying to fumble through it. They didn't know how to just put the, the Scantron right up against it. Come on, we're talking about a population that is still struggling with running their debit card. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jeez. Yeah. So, I don't know. The side with the chip goes in the machine first. Yes, which side? Slide? I don't know. What's my... Okay. But but even even if... You know, I mean, okay, so pardon me for just interrupting, but even for just scanning for the ticket, I mean, whether it's paper or phone, if you print it out at home... Or even if you go to the kiosk and you have to touch the screen, it gives you a piece of paper and you just put the thing down. I mean, you know, even, I mean, that can be more or less safe in its own way. Sure. But we have, there are two things that are about the space and idiocy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have really calculated the true depths and expansive widths of, of human idiocy. So... Let's go to the in-flight janitors. And I thought this mm-hmm. was interesting because not just having, you know, on a, an occasional air marshal on a plane, but having an actual janitorial staff that is responsible you for the, cleaning the stuff the air up. air marshals are going to be cross-trained to do both roles. <laughs> I can just They'll see that they're making the, Passenger the 57 back. right now. There's going to be an epic mop fight with sanitizer. But yes. <laughs> That'll be awesome. <laughs> I, really I gotta wonder though, what? I mean, yeah, I mean, it just says expect janitors on board planes whose only job is to make sure the cabin is kept clean throughout the flight. I don't remember seeing huge trash spills on the numerous flights that I've taken. And well, somebody just in the seat can't down the aisle like, with squirt it and wipe it down. Salt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Just spray the people? <laughs> I, uh, There's now, no and, way I'm getting on a plane anytime in the near future. No, they're going to inject Lysol into the cabin air system because that'll <laughs> inject the passengers the with Lysol and UV light. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I believe that was uh, <laughs> Trump Air is going to start doing that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Trump Air. I'm so thankful that's gone. <laughs> and the other aspect of it is handling people's bags. So yeah. you and your filthy bags. So they're talking about UV, disinfecting the bags, and all that kind of stuff. Ha- having you pass through a disinfection tunnel. Look, everything they talk about right there is so experimental. We don't... Part of the issue of shining a light inside your body, according to... <laughs> oh, God. The a, deadly, a deadly light inside of your body. Oh. But, but uh, think about how many people actually wash their luggage. So, I mean, that part is a great idea. It, it, there's no, there's <laughs> there's can't. Some extent. Uh, this is like, <laughs> this is such bullshit. Now, let's get to this. Now, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, 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 there's more? I'm there's more. I'm my head off into this because nothing here sounds realistic. And this is the best they've come up with. Um, I, I also took a look at the arrow plans where um, Latitude Arrow and hit the CEO is talking about sanitization. And I thought he raised some pretty good points because much like the way how we're trying to sanitize things like the keypads when we go into the grocery store to pay for our stuff and people have to sanitize electronics, if you're using the wrong sanitizer, you are actually possibly stripping valuable things like the oils that lubricate gears and all kinds of things that insulate it and speeding up oxidization. So that could speed up the need for um, more repair and Aren't we currently struggling with an administration that thinks, you know, hey, why are we bothering these innocent companies with things like oversight and inspection? So much like pork, I think maybe we should all consider long driving trips or individual <laughs> Well, it has <laughs> been infrastructure weeks. Now, I personally am ready to buy a sailboat because my friends in Iceland are just like, you know, you should have just moved here. And I'm starting to think I was turned off by the ice and the cold, but the sanity is really attractive to me. <laughs> so now, let me get this straight, Georgia. You've, you've read through these articles about airlines and what their procedures are going to be. And after reading it, you've decided to buy a sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. Or get into really good shape by swimming. But something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I mean, I'm kind of glad that they're at least working on it. I've looked through even some of the other. I mean, these are the three I picked that I thought were mm-hmm. most directly relevant and tied yeah. together. Because there's a whole lot of other stuff that the Chinese airlines are doing head to toe PPE. And I may have made a certain full body condom joke. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> but but it's accurate. Let's be honest here. This virus causes so much biological disruption to the human body that getting it could lead you, even if you survive, it could lead to lifelong biological changes. People want convenience. The, the United You're States have to military. Suck the hell up and wear a full on hazmat suit to go fly. And the sooner somebody in power says, hey, suck it up, you're just going to have to wear a fucking hazmat suit, we might actually start doing something that's worth talking about. Keep in mind, the U.S. military has officially stated that COVID 19 exposure disqualifies you for service. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not the flu, it's not a cold, it's it, it it you might you might be asymptomatic and go through it with no problems, and you might be on dialysis for the rest of your life. Yeah. Who knows? Hey, not. it's just take a chance. <laughs> but you know, okay. So you mentioned the latitude article and the guy from um uh, yeah latitude um arrows latitude arrows, and and you know it's so this is actually very interesting. You touched on this, but. One of the things that he brings out is you see these advertisements or these videos of the the airline companies saying, look, we're doing such a great job. We're fogging the cabins between flights, and this is such a great thing. Nope. Those of us who don't know any better praise them for their efforts. Yep. But this guy says, first of all, the fog doesn't get everywhere. 
Nope. So you're not really doing a very good job of cleaning. And secondly, the chemicals in the fogging stuff that you're using actually deteriorates the materials in the cabin. Think the about metals. deteriorated <laughs> sealant gasket, seal, the, the, the gaskets, the yeah. gaskets, I can't talk. Think about how you could deteriorate the sealing gaskets around the windows <laughs> with the yeah. fog. Or, or Just a space shuttle O-ring, and I think everybody will understand. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and he talks about how you need to just take the freaking time and clean it. And if you look at the, the Latitude Arrow discussion article on, um, let me, at the Apex.Aero, where they, and also in the Forbes article, where they talk about the time to turn around an airplane. So that means instead of being able to rush out 10 to 15 flights a day, they might be only able to get out eight because they need to take two hours to do a detailed cleaning. And, and airplanes don't make money when they're on the ground. Right? No, they do not. And right. not just that, I mean, my town is small and it's a college town. And frankly, I have not seen any craziness in all the shutdown and we've been shut down since March. And today it was just like, holy shit, everybody's losing their mind. Cause I had to go to a couple of stores and I was just watching this. And I was like, what the heck? Um, people are impatient. People are not able to handle not getting what they want because our society has a rapid turnaround. So we, we are so used to fast and we are not handling the fact that we cannot get what we want, when we want it, how we want it, as fast as humanly possible. Mm -hmm.